Hi, so uh, now I'll get into some of the issues that I talked about in the last uh, video. The first one is the absolute nature of morals. And morality, of course, is something that is uh, heartily uh, denounced by the materialists as something that is simply, generally, as something that is simply a product of you know the the sort of the way it it worked or the way it turned out. The reason that we have morality at all is because of um, evolution. So uh, if if there was a group of people who a group of beings who um, had no morality, uh, well they've they've been they've they may have existed, but they've become extinct because of their inability to work together, because of um, the non desirability of these things. Now. Okay, for sure agreed um, that our morality, but listen to what you're saying, our morality as it exists today is, exists that way because of, of the way uh, it's been developed. And of course that's the case. That doesn't mean that the way we look at morality is in any way moral. So using that as an argument to say, well, that's why morality is relative or that's why morality is um, simply a product of nature, it doesn't say anything at all. Um, now, if you were to s if you were to say that, well, our current state of being is perfect, or is the the best that we could possibly be, then yes, then you would say, have to say, well, yeah, then the perfect morality is, or real morality is, um, is relative, or is based on this sort of, um, or is exactly the way we look at it, the way we we carry it out, and it's it's very much relative. You know, certain times we keep it, certain times we don't. But the truth is relative morality has not served us very well. Um, uh, neither has absolute morality as we understand it. Now this doesn't um, uh, uh, disprove the fact, the idea that there might be absolute morality. And I'm going to discuss why uh, it's possible to understand that there is absolute morality. Now what does it mean to say there's absolute morality? Saying that there's absolute morality is simply saying that there is a law which governs the nature of the mind. And this is exactly what we would expect if we were to come to a scientific understanding of the mind. If we were to admit in an, a scientific terms the existence of the mind, we should expect, we should expect and not um, be suspicious when we find that it actually runs according to certain laws, just as the physical world does. So we look at the physical world and we say, well, gravity, yeah, it's universal. You know, it's not a relative thing where sometimes the the body goes according to it, and sometimes the body, uh, the the physical doesn't. Um, gravity is universal, as are you know all physical laws, as far as we can understand them. Now, what we understand is that the mind runs according to certain laws as well, and these laws we could call morality. Now, I'm going to give a very specific definition of morality, um, or different definition of good, I suppose. We consider something to be good when it brings happiness. Okay, this is a this is a, a, a view, or this is sort of a, um, a judgment call. You could say that uh, sa or suffering or unhappiness is a good thing. Um, I don't think that's a very good an, um, explanation of reality because you know, by definition, once we call it suffering, it, it's not a good thing. So we're going to say that a good thing it brings happiness. Therefore, anything that is moral is something that brings happiness. Uh, we will say, those things which bring true happiness, those things are truly moral. Um, and when we look at it this way, we can see that there actually, uh, for sure, must be certain laws which bring about the, um, the states of happiness, this um, reality which we would then call happiness or, or uh, freedom from suffering. This, this allows us to at least form a basis of what we might call um, what we, may, we might call ultimate morality. And in fact, people who are generally call themselves um, relative moralists or people who, who say that morality is something that changes over time actually have a very uh, rigid, very universal understanding of morality anyway. They would say that, for instance, in the case of, of um, dictators or of, of terribly cruel people, you have a moral responsibility to kill them, for instance, or to do away with them. And so they say, for that reason, morality is, is relative. Well, 
this, this is really absurd because what you're saying is that we always have the moral, you know, it's moral, um, or we have this moral principle that in order to create happiness we have to kill someone, we have to do something that other people might say is a bad deed, but this is actually a good thing, it actually brings happiness, and so this is a moral law. And they would say that always, that, that always um, accrues, that always holds. You know, so you, you couldn't say, well, you know, what if there was, um, uh, you know, could you sometimes kill someone who's doing bad deeds or stop someone who's doing bad deeds and, and not sometimes and so on. Um, and so wh what we're actually looking at is, you know, we're all trying to find this understanding of what are the laws of the mind, the, you know, the ways that the mind can then experience peace, experience happiness, experience freedom from suffering, and yet we just approach them in, in different ways. So um, I don't think there's any reason for us to think that there, that there should not be an, an absolute guide of, of uh, what is right and what is wrong. Um, I, I think uh, in, in general we're all looking for this. We're all sort of expecting that there will be some laws that govern the, the nature of the mind. Some people deny the existence of the mind, but they still think um, that there is some uh, guiding rules on how to find happiness and peace, and those rules I would call moral. Um, the 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 addition w which I would give here is that um, once we give the mind a real uh, existence, um, we then have to realize that everything we do is going to then affect the the nature of the mind. So. Uh, every time we kill, it is going to affect our mind. Every time we, we do something, because killing or stealing or, or, or all of these things which we generally consider to be immoral, we do have to understand that they are going to have an impact on our mind. They are going to change the way we think. This is why people feel guilt. This is why feel, people feel upset. This is why feel, people feel rage. Uh, this is why people have nightmares. It's why people who do bad things tend to um, have difficulty meditating, for instance. They find that they have mental instability. So this is the first of the things that I wanted to discuss, the idea that there might be an absolute morality. In fact, through meditation, it's very easy to see that there is uh, a law which governs the mind. But um, without any meditation, I'm just going to leave it at that and give sort of this um, sort of a, a superficial explanation. Uh, as soon as you practice any kind of meditation which allows you to see the reality of the the nature of the mind, it's very easy to see that it is governed by very specific laws, and these are uh, an absolute morality. Um, and, you know, there are many other things I could say about morality, things like um, people talk about how absolute morality could, could, could lead to suffering and so on. Well, the idea is that um, absolute, reality could nev absolute morality could never lead to suffering, otherwise it wouldn't be moral, um, since we say that morality leads to happiness. Um, and this is a very deep subject, perhaps I'll have to give another talk on exactly you know, what is happiness and, and you know, arguing some of the, 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 the fine details, but I think this is uh, sort of a good basic understanding. So thank you for watching. This is the first in, in my series of, of uh, sort of corollaries on the existence of the mind. Thank you.